Here's the next type of factoring uh, video to help you, and this is going to deal with our last factoring technique, which is called grouping, and then I'm also going to go into combination factoring, which is taking all the techniques that we've worked with, which is the GCF, the takeout method, foil factoring, perfect squares, perfect cubes, and then finally grouping, and mixing it up where you'll have to do more than one factoring to finish a problem. So we're going to start with grouping, and what's special about grouping, the way that the, the indication that you know you need to try grouping is that you're going to start with four terms. It will always be a four-term po polynomial, whereas if it was three terms, you try FOIL factor. If it's two terms, you try the perfect squares and perfect cubes. The other thing that you'll realize is when you do grouping, essentially it's just doing that takeout, that GCF technique, twice. What you're going to do is you're going to look at the first two terms and decide what can be taken out of that. So if I look at those two terms, what they have in common is they're both divisible by 2 and they both have a Y. Then in parentheses, you're going to write down what is left. So what's left when you take out a 2i is an x plus 5. Then you're going to do the same thing with the second two terms. And the goal is the stuff that's left, the stuff in parentheses, should be the same as what was in parentheses in the first piece. So this time, they're both divisible by 3. Now, because this is a negative, I actually want to take out a negative along with a 3. So I'm going to take out a negative 3. When I do that, I'm left with x plus 5. I started off with a negative 15, but when I divide out a negative, I get a positive 5. So what you should see is these are like factors. So that like factor can be brought to the front. And then the stuff that you pulled out, those GCFs of the original, that's going to go in its own parentheses. At this point, it is done. It is now factored. We took something that was four terms, and we factored into two binomials. I'm going to do the same thing on the next one. If I look at the first two terms, what they have in common is an x squared. What I have left is a 2x and a minus 1. Keep in mind, when you take out the entire piece, you still have to put a 1 there. And then I'm going to look at the second two terms, and what they have in common is a 5. I'm just going to take out a positive 5, because the 10 is positive. And what I'm left with is 2x minus 1. Again, these should be the same when you do grouping. If they're not, you either incorrectly did grouping, or maybe it wasn't the technique that you needed to use to begin with. We're going to write down that common piece, 2x minus 1, and then it's in its own parentheses, we're going to write down x squared plus 5, the pieces that we pulled out. Now, x squared plus 5, you might look at that and say, well, that's perfect squares. However, it's not subtraction, and 5 is not a perfect square, so this one will not go any further. We're going to compare that to this next slide. This is the last main factoring before we start getting into now solving, and this is looking at all the different factoring we've, te we've gone through. And so I made a little checklist on this slide to help you review, and so things to think about. First of all, you always want to check and see if you can take out a greatest common factor, no matter what the technique is, no matter what the title of the factoring is. You always want to check that first. Second and third and fourth, they all kind of go together, is just saying, looking at the terms, it'll give you an idea of what factoring you want to try. If it's three terms, a trinomial, you want to try to FOIL factor it. If it's two terms, you want to look and see if it's a perfect square or a perfect cube. If it's four terms, you want to try grouping like we just did. So we're looking at this first one right here, and first thing I'm going to look and see if I can take anything out. Um, they don't all have X's, so I can't take an X out. They don't have any uh, common, greatest common factor, so I'm actually not going to do any takeout. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to count the terms. There's four terms, so I'm going to automatically try grouping. When I look at the first two, what they have in common is they both have a 3 and an x. What they have left over is an x squared minus 9. Then I'm going to do the same thing with these terms. What they both have is they both are divisible by 4, which leaves me with an x squared minus 9. Notice, again, these are the same. Bring the x squared minus 9 to the front and then write down the pieces that you brought out, the 3x plus 4. The reason that this falls under the category of combination factoring is it's not done. If you look at the two binomials, this first binomial right here is a difference of perfect squares. The reason I know that, it's two terms, it has a subtraction, and x is squared, and 9 is a perfect square. So this goes further. This is x plus 3, x minus 3. This one, there's nothing I can do with it. It doesn't follow any factoring form. It's already down to just a plain old x, so I'm just going to write it down below. So my final answer are the three binomials that I wrote at the very bottom. Second one, looking at this, again, check the GCF. When I look, first I'm going to look at the numbers, and the first thing I notice is they're all divisible by 2. The second thing that I notice is they all have an x in them. So my GCF, my takeout piece, is a 2x. What I have left over is an x squared, a plus 5x, and a minus 24. 
Again, the reason that this is called combination is because I'm not done yet. This, what I have left in the parentheses is a trinomial, three terms. So what I'm going to try to do is see if I can FOIL factor it. I'm going to keep the 2x, write my parentheses. My signs are going to be one positive and one negative. It is going to be an x and an x. To get 24, it's either 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, or 4 times 6. The combination that works gets us the correct middle term is the 3 times 8. We need 8 to be positive and 3 to be negative. You can do a quick check. That's 8x. That's negative 3x, giving me a middle term of 5x. So if you need to do that extra check, if you can do it in your head, that's fine as well. And this one is finished. And make sure you write all three pieces. Sometimes people pull out the 2x and then it kind of disappears on them. It's still part of your factored answer. The third one. The third one, first thing I'm going to do is check greatest common factor, and they are both divisible by 3. So I'm going to take the 3 out, leaving me with an x to the fourth, minus 16. I get the 16 because that's 48 divided by 3. I have two terms in the parentheses. They are both being, they are being subtracted, and I'm working with perfect squares. 16 is a perfect square. So I'm going to do my difference of perfect squares. This one's a little more complicated because it starts out as an x to the fourth. If it starts out as an x to the fourth, then this has to be an x squared. This has to be an x squared. One is positive, one is negative. 16, in order to get 16, it had to be 4 times 4. This one actually is still not done, so this has three steps to the factoring. I look at the x squared plus 4, that piece is done because it is addition. I cannot factor the addition of perfect squares. However, the last piece, the x squared minus 4, that can go one more step. That is another difference of perfect squares. Because it is subtraction and they are perfect squares, we get x plus 2, x minus 2. So this is a combination factoring that we actually did three things. We did a takeout method with the GCF, we did a difference of perfect squares once, and then we did a difference of perfect squares a second time. One more, we look at this, I can't, there is no greatest common factor. I can't take out an x, I can't take out a number. So then I'm going to count the terms. There are three terms, so I'm going to try to FOIL factor it. So I'm going to make my parentheses. This is a subtraction, so that means one is positive and one is negative. What's different about this is this is an x to the 6. So to get an x to the 6, we had to have an x to the 3rd and an x to the 3rd. That's what gives me a middle term that has an x to the 3rd. Now I need to get 16. So 16 is either 1 times 16, 2 times 8, or 4 times 4. Looking at the combinations, uh, the one that's going to work is going to be the 2 times 8. I need the 8 to be positive, and I need the 2 to be negative. You can do a quick check. Inner term is 8x cubed, outer term is negative 2x cubed, giving you the middle term. This one is not done. Right now, I have two binomials, so it could be a perfect square or a perfect cube. First thing I notice is the exponent's cubed, so it's definitely not a perfect squared. Then I'm going to look at the numbers. 8 is a perfect cube. 8 is 2 cubed. 2 is not a perfect cube. So this second binomial here, this one's done. x cubed minus 2 is part of my answer. The first one, I'm going to come off to the side and do my perfect cube. a is x b is 2. Using that formula for perfect cube, the formula said you take a plus b, so x plus 2, and then in parentheses it is the a squared, so x squared, minus these two multiplied together, minus 2x plus b squared, so 2 squared is 4. And that will never go any further. Even though it looks like you might be able to do a FOIL factor with that middle trinomial, it will not go any further. The perfect cubes never do. So this is a great test to see if you're really ready to take a factor factoring quiz because it tests every single skill that we did as we worked on factoring.